Welcome back to Hedge Apple Acres. I'm Cal, and in today's video we are going to use the Doolittle method to split a beehive. You may have seen in our other video how we split that hive. But before we talk about the Doolittle method, if you're new to my channel, I help you raise, manage, and breed livestock while managing forages for grazing as well as honeybees. <laughs> if you're not subscribed to my channel, click the subscribe button below. Also click on the bell next to it if you would, if you would like to receive an email notification when I release a new video. So we have a video of how we split a beehive. We took, found the queen and we put her in a nuke. Also, if you watch that video, you realize I went through that whole hive to find the queen only to find her on the cover. Just crazy. Last place I would have looked for her. In fact, it was the last place I looked for her. For this hive, we're gonna use the do, the do little method. With the do little method, I use a a regular size super and I use a queen excluder but I don't have to find the queen so it goes a little bit quicker what I will do I'll go in I'll find frames of brood I'll knock them off knock off the bees I want open frames of brood or open brood I'm gonna knock the bees off and put them up here and I'll do that for three or four frames then I'm going to um, put it on top of the hive on top of the queen excluder So I will have over the next few hours nurse bees move up there to take care of that open brood And when that happens, I can come back later today, and I know my queens in the bottom and in the top I have open brood That's ready to raise a queen and I will split the two of them First thing I do I put smoke on my hands. I don't want the bees stinging me. I'm not a fan of it. I also squared up around my the base of my shirt so they don't crawl up this. And this great shirt has a nice little breeze, nice little ventilation hole. So I'm gonna puff a little bit in there. I don't need the queen queen excluder quite yet. I've got the frames. They're ready. We're gonna trade out. Rather than stop it, start at the top super. I'm gonna go down to the middle super because. The top super, hopefully we don't have too much brood in here. You never know, I don't run a clean excluder, so I might have it in there. But we're going to gamble and say we don't. We got some nice bees there. Okay, I'm gonna take out a couple of frames here because as I, as I get the open brood, I'm gonna put them in here. Now this first frame has some wonky comb on it. Wonky is a technical term that I use quite often. It's comb that doesn't match what I'm doing. And I've got it stuck pretty good. Oh, I'm breaking some of that comb. Now they've got some honey, some pollen stores. Okay, so the question is, is the queen in the top super or the high body? We're going to gamble and go to the high body. I didn't see a good, good, um, a good brood pattern there. So I can't even estimate, you know, sometimes it's the bottom of the circle or top of a circle. And then I can take a guess where the queen is. But here, I'm gonna re smoke my hands a little bit. Also, by doing that, it kind of gives my smoker a little fuel so it doesn't go out. Because whenever you need it, you don't want it out. I got some red in there. There we go. Okay. Oftentimes, the outside frame doesn't have much on it in the way of brood. Occasionally, it will. And, of course, it makes a liar out of me. Got a fair amount of brood. Oh, I do want to shake it off, so I'm just going to leave it here for a second. That way I can do all the shake, shake, shake it off at one time. I have some open brood. Now, one
one thing I can do if I find the queen I don't have to shake the bees off so I'll go ahead and I still need more um, open brood but decent frame to add. Let's see if we can find even more open brood. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got a fair amount of open brood here. So right now I could do one, two, no, right here, three frames. Let's go ahead and find mm -hmm. another frame. And if I find, and if I don't find the queen, I will, um, Here's the queen, so I know where she is. So since I know where she is, let's go ahead. And I don't have to shake. I'm gonna put this frame over to the side with her. I don't have to shake stuff off. So, I'm just going to move the, the ones with some brood over. moving frames that have open brood and then the new frames I'm putting in are foundationless so I am putting them between frames so I got four frames there with um, brood we're gonna go ahead and push these together always worries me I don't want to lose a queen when I push them together okay we're gonna put this back together okay refresh in this hive hive super I have four frames of open brood the queen, I saw her, so I know she's in that bottom frame. Because I saw her, I could have done a nuke split and moved her out, but this time I just wanted to do a doolittle. So I have four frames of open brood here. Um, I have my queen excluder here. One thing I do need here, in these empty frames, I need some honey. Because what I'm going to do, when I come back later, I'm going to split them apart. And this this super will need some honey in it and pollen let's see what we got here I need some pollen and nectar stores not much right there Put this right here. Now putting undrawn frames into an area where they have honey stored does not always work the best because sometimes they'll just draw those combs out with the honey. This has some pollen on it. So we're going to put it right here. Putting the frame, foundationless frame between two frames of drawn out comb. I got some pollen there. More pollen. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and put this another frame of pollen in here because they need that pollen for raising brood. I'd like a, a frame of honey for them, but if I don't get much honey for them, I can feed them. This has some, so this is going to be a good one right here. back together now I put this frame it was an outside frame I put it in the center so I could space these um, foundationless back out or the the new foundationless out and normally if I was in the brood chamber I wouldn't be as likely to do that because I want to keep the order okay refresh we saw the queen in here so I have her down he here uh, but I'm using Doolittle method, and Doolittle method does not rely upon having the queen. So I moved four frames of open brood over here. If I didn't see the queen, I would have shook the bees off and put, had no bees with these. And then put it together with the queen excluder. with the, the new super above it. So for the Doolittle method, let's, for the Doolittle method, we saw the queen down here, so we know she's in here. But we took four frames with open brood put in this top super and we also put two frames of pollen and two frames of honey in there and then we put that above the whole hive above a queen excluder so what's going to happen over the next few hours the nurse bees are going to move up to take care of that open brood so so later I'm going to come back and I'm going to move all this hive over here I'm going to put a new top on it and put a new base on this and this will be a small hive in the old location so all the foragers are going to come back to this this means this hive is going to be packed i might even put another super on here or i'll just watch it to see if i need another super um, with all those bees they'll raise a better queen so uh, they will raise queen i'll come back in a week and see my queen cells and then i can decide what i'm going to do I can just leave them alone and the first queen emerges she'll kill the others she'll go on her mating flights and should be laying in about a month or i can use those other queen cells to make more splits we'll we'll decide that after we take a look at the queen cells they produce as always we appreciate you watching and we encourage you to comment like subscribe and share we'll be seeing you more